With the delay of The Bachelorette and Bachelor in Paradise, ABC has filled their Monday night summer season TV slot with The Bachelor Goat. Yes, the greatest seasons of all time, where Chris Harrison sits down in his home to recap an entire season of the show in three hours. Three hours. For a three-hour tour, a three-hour tour. But I don't have time for that, so I'm going to recap this season in ten minutes. So me think, why waste time? Say lot word when few word do trick. Alright, Sean Lowe. His season of The Bachelor was from 2013 and is widely considered the best season of The Bachelor. And by that I'm not including The Bachelorette or Bachelor in Paradise or other spin-offs. So naturally, ABC has placed it first for this 10-part series of Greatest Seasons. Now why is it looked back at so fondly? Primarily because Sean Lowe is the only Bachelor to still be married to his final Rose pick. Not the runners-up, not someone from a different season, the final Rose pick. Now, Sean Lowe was originally from Emily Maynard's season of The Bachelorette. He got in third, with Emily stating upon sending him home that she just dumped the perfect guy. And Sean's nice guy attitude packed into a BB bod led him to become The Bachelor. And America rejoiced. Then there's his cast of ladies, and in this season, there are really only seven women you need to know about. The ones that you could say are major players in what goes down in the season, or people you might recognize from other Bachelor spin-off shows like Paradise or Bachelor Winter Games. These women are Desiree, Ash Lee, and yeah, that's Ash Lee with a capital L in the middle, Leslie, Sarah, Lindsay, Tierra, and Catherine. Now, if you're a fan, you likely recognize a few of these women. Desiree, spoiler alert, becomes the next Bachelorette. Leslie, you might recognize from Bachelor Winter Games, and Ashley and Sarah were on the first season of Bachelor in Paradise, with Sarah returning for the third season as well. But this is about Sean Lowe's season, and like most every season of The Bachelor, the first night has its gimmicks. Though really, there are only two important things you need to know from this first night. One is Lindsay who really makes a first impression by no showing up in a wedding dress. I thought you're not supposed to wear white to a wedding. I know, but there was an emergency. I look really good in white. She then proceeds to get tipsy, not really touched upon in the recap, and tries to kiss Sean before being rejected. But somehow, Sean is still interested. Lindsay started off by scaring the crap out of me. But I love her confidence and her boldness. So she gets a rose. And speaking of roses, this season production did something a little bit different by giving Sean the option to hand out 12 roses to women over the course of the first night instead of one and the rest at the final rose ceremony. I talk a lot on this channel about how a bachelor, and I'm only talking about bachelors, not bachelorettes, has never given his final rose recipient the first impression rose. Peter is now the only one to do so, but with how horribly that ended up, I'm not really going to count it. But some have pointed to this season as an exception to that, due to 12 roses going out and one of them to Sean's eventual winner. But I only count the very first rose from this season as the first impression rose, which actually goes to Tierra immediately upon meeting Sean. Will you accept this rose? Yes. Tierra obviously made a big first impression on me. And Sean couldn't have been more off as Tierra is going to be the, quote, villain of the season. <laughs> uh, Tierra. Right off the bat, Sean was attracted to her energy and the amount of positivity she showed towards him. But that positivity didn't extend to the other women. I honestly wish I was a fighter. I honestly do, because I would beat the out of these bitches. And during this season, Tierra was highlighted as someone who would often embellish injuries in order to receive extra time and sympathy from Sean. Like when she fell on the stairs. One second she's in a neck brace, the next she's like this. I wish you hadn't have fallen. God, we got this little time together, though. Kinda worked out <laughs> in benefit of me. <laughs> now this was week three. Fast forward to week six, where the gang has traveled to Alberta, Canada, and, on a group date, decide to jump into the cold waters for a bit of adrenaline-induced fun. But Tierra has a bad reaction. I really hope she's okay. So cool. Wow, if that's how Tierra's feeling, I can only imagine how bad the other women are reacting. That was absolutely insane! I felt amazing. That seriously felt so incredible. 
incredible. Like, I would do it again. Naturally, Sean gives Tierra more alone time to see how she's feeling, and the other women start turning against her as the Bachelor contestant who cried wolf. And as the season goes on, the flack against Tierra grows and grows, so much so that Ashley pulls one of the biggest Bachelor mistakes ever. She snitches to the lead on a one-on-one. -on -one. And when Tierra finds out, it leads to probably the moment she's most remembered for this season. Straight stairs. Raised eyebrow. I can't control my eyebrow. I cannot control my eyebrow. I can't control what's on my face. Ultimately, though, Sean decides he doesn't want to be Mr. Sparkle. Tierra, you, you have a table. sparkle. They said, Tierra, you have a sparkle. Do not let those girls take your sparkle away. And so he sends Tierra home that week, week seven, right before hometowns. Now, of the remaining important players, Sarah sends herself home during the Canada trip, and Leslie, who they had kissed Sean for over three minutes in one of the least romantic one-on-ones ever, which, by the way, they later replicated in Bachelor in Paradise, Leslie gets sent packing right before hometowns, as Sean felt she wasn't being open with her feelings. And at the After the Final Rose, Sean expressed that he probably would have given Leslie a rose if she had just opened up a bit more. Which leaves our final four. Ashley, Desiree, Lindsay, and Catherine. Oh, and Chris Harrison here also checked in on Sarah, who now has a boyfriend of three years. Now, during Hometowns, Sean has a super easy date with Ashley. Lindsay's dad is a two-star general, but gives him his blessing. Catherine's sisters are skeptical, but the hometown goes all right. And the real drama occurs with Desiree's brother. Oh, no, I think you're just a playboy, you know? You're just having fun with the circumstances. I don't know what to make of this guy. And at the end of the day, Desiree is sent home. But don't feel bad for her. She quickly became a fan favorite, especially after the series of punked-style pranks that her and Sean pulled on each other that the special left out. And she went on to be the Bachelorette where this atrocious and wonderful nightmare was made. Last, last time you saw me, I was crying in a limo. Sean sent me home and put my heart in limbo. Desiree actually ends up marrying her final pick in the season and now has a family with him. So she gets her own love story. Back to Sean's season, and from here, the show moves on to Thailand for the remainder of the season. By the way, for this Fantasy Suite week, there's not going to be any hanky-panky, as Sean Lowe is actually a born-again virgin. So it's just going to be late-night chit-chats for Lindsay, Catherine, and Ashley. And I have to say, this Greatest Season Ever special really glosses over Ashley, who I would say was among the frontrunners early on, but got quickly overtaken by Catherine and Lindsay as the season progressed. Ashley heads home during Fantasy Suite week, and Chris Harrison checks in on her, but really only to talk about her fight with Tierra. She too is married and with a family, which now leaves the final two, Lindsay and Catherine. An unconventional storyline, especially for a season from back in 2013. There's one woman who came on with a gimmick, the wedding dress, and tried to kiss an unwilling Sean night one, and another woman who believed she was on the show just to check off a box, because she was Filipino. And Catherine talks about this in an Instagram post she made before the Greatest Season Ever episode aired this past Monday. Now, if you don't know, on finale date, it's bachelor law that whoever comes out of the limo first is the one getting dumped. Unfortunately, the wedding dress night one wasn't enough, and Lindsay goes home. And in this moment, she's probably best remembered for not wearing her heels a moment longer than she needs to. Now, in this special, Chris Harrison checks in on Lindsay as well, who's doing great and, just like Ashley and Desiree, is happily married with children. Which leaves... Catherine. For a lot of the first half of the season, Catherine was present but never quite in the foreground. Until week six when she receives a one-on-one -on -one date and proves how open she's willing to be with Sean. She talks about how her friend died when she was very young and how much she values life, and she talks about her dad's struggle with attempting to end his own life. And if Leslie not opening up was a bad sign for Sean, Catherine is really the opposite. Being so open and honest and trusting from a very early stage in the show helped Sean see her as more than just a background player in the season, but as a person he's falling in love with. And when Sean proposes, we get what we all tune into this show for. Something that's been missing from The Bachelor for what feels like a long while now. Catherine. Are you married? Yes. Genuine love. An honest connection that feels real, not forced. 
not hidden behind a desire for clout and Instagram followers. Two people who found each other and are happier for it. It's a moment like this that makes a season so great. And these two have lasted, now with three kids. And as a result, we have one of The Bachelor's biggest and most successful couples in Catherine and Sean. Are you ready? This is about to happen. <laughs> I now pronounce you man and wife. <laughs> so that's it. One season, a three hour special, all condensed to about 10 minutes of only the most important parts. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to like and subscribe if you did. There's more content on the way. So until then, Bachelor Fan Take, out. So me think, why waste time? Say lot word when few word do trick.